Welcome to American Black Journal. I'm Stephen Henderson. During Black History Month, we're putting the spotlight on some of the historic achievements of African Americans in the Detroit area. My first guest is a woman who left quite a legacy after serving more than two decades in the Michigan House of Representatives. Dr. Alma Stallworth was the first and only black woman to serve as chair of the powerful Public Utilities Committee. She also founded the Black Caucus Foundation of Michigan. Dr. Stallworth recently published her memoirs titled The Stallworth Legacy. I'm pleased to welcome the Honorable Alma Stallworth to American Black Journal. Well, thank you so much. Yes. It's my privilege to yeah. be here today. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's real hard for people now to think that it's a big deal for a black woman to be in the state legislature because we have many, or we have several. Yes. Uh, but, but of course, uh, when you were elected, uh, this was this was a rarity and a, and a phenomenon of, of sorts. Didn't have many. Yeah. We had three other women. Uh huh. But um, I think people didn't really think about women in leadership in terms of public policy and and serving as a lawmaker. Right. And so I think that I was fortunate in that I had worked very hard in the community and I had a base of support and was able to generate the votes necessary. Uh huh. Uh huh. And so tell me about that first campaign. What, what made you think, hey, I'm going to run for the legislature and uh, what was it like uh, to, uh, getting to the point where you actually, where you actually won the seat? Well, I, I had never thought of being in politics or being in the legislature, but because of, of my leadership uh, in the Schultz Community Council, there were a little, lot of people that felt like I would be a good representative because I understood the needs and could represent the concerns of, of that community. And I had one friend who was a Republican. He used to call me up every day. You know, you 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 can do the job. You don't have to worry about it. You know, right. just go up there. I said, well, you know, I've never done anything like that. And he says, okay, for a housewife to go up there. That was his purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, I found that a lot of people that I knew as a, as a young person, I was a member of Bethel Amy Church, so a lot of them were active in the unions. I worked for Head Start, and my director was very active in the 17th Congressional District, which had a lot of control in uh -huh. those days in terms of endorsements and that kind of thing. And so pulling all those things together ensured that I would have the votes necessary. It took a lot of work, uh -huh. but I was successful yeah. in getting elected. Yeah, and, and then, of course, you went on to an important leadership position that... Uh, that uh, not just African American women, but 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 women uh, don't always get to. Well, it helped because Democrats at that time were in control of the house. <laughs> that always and, helps. And right. also, uh, seniority was very important. Right. I ran for the Senate unsuccessfully um, against an incumbent, and uh, I was out of out of the house for about a year. Um, and uh, Mayor Coleman Young gave me an appointment, so I worked for him four years. Uh -huh. But I decided, you know, I'm going to go back to Lansing because I like the work and, and things that I were involved in. And so when I went back, uh, I had the knowledge in terms of which committees, you know, sure. were more important. Uh, not to say all of them aren't important, but right. some of them have more some influence. Some of them have a lot more influence than others, no question. So public utilities gave me access to the utility companies, telephone companies, and also uh, under Blancher, we had an energy assurance package. Uh -huh. And I was the first Democrat to pass six bills tie power together, which <clears throat> in law provided support for low income families, requiring upgrading the households that they lived in. A lot of them needed furnaces, they sure. didn't have uh, thermostats, they didn't have windows and doors that were insulated, steps were bad. So with that legislation, they provided funding for local contractors to work on the houses. And the owners had to agree to continue to let those people live there at least five years. Uh -huh. And then for the incentive was reducing their taxes. Right, right, which, which changed a lot of, uh, of access in, in, in the right. city for, for utilities. Mm -hmm. um, who, uh, remind me, who was the governor when, when you first joined the legislature? Uh, when I first 
ran, it was Governor Milliken. Was it uh, Governor Milliken? Uh, okay, yes. and the last one would have been uh, Jennifer, uh, Jennifer Grand Granholm. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's four, right. uh, four, four different governors. Uh, uh, two Republicans and two Democrats, right. Jim Blanchard, Jennifer Granholm, uh, Milliken, and, and John Engler. Tell me about the relationship you had with, with, with those governors and, and which ones you thought <laughs> you could get, get along with and get something done with and which ones were tougher. Well, actually, um, I had a few bills that passed under each of them. Uh -huh. And... Uh, in terms of relationships, I guess I would have to say Democrats well, it was were, easier. Sure, of <laughs> were closer <laughs> and more amenable yeah. and helpful in terms of, you know, the process and really making sure that there were opportunities for us to participate, not only in terms of passing bills, yeah. but representing the state of Michigan in other situations. So right. um, I, I feel that I was very fortunate to have that opportunity. I think I served one term where there's dual uh, represent, uh, leadership. Uh, leadership, right. We had two when speakers. Paul Hilligans and yeah. uh, I won't remember the, yeah. the Democrat who was uh -huh. the, the co-speaker that, that, uh -huh. that time, yeah. So that was kind of a different experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because see, in getting the committee appointments, you really have to have someone who's interested in giving you. And then of course, uh, they want to feel like you can collaborate and be part of whatever they're their right. plan is. Right, right. Um, talk to me about the difference. I mean, the, the legislature is a really different place now uh, than it was when you were there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, people don't stay as long. Uh, they don't get as much knowledge or experience, um, and they're you know they're gone uh, after uh, just a few terms. Um, from your perspective, uh, uh, were things easier to get done? When, when you were in the legislature and we didn't have these kinds of the, the, the structure that we have now? Well, I think the focus was stronger. Uh -huh. uh, representatives and senators had their own personal uh, priorities because at that time the unions were very strong sure. and they had issues that they wanted. We had the women's movement. We had always had problems with children and families. So people had choices. Yeah. Where now um, I think they're they're kind of locked into whatever is available, and leadership's tough to have yeah. because uh, they're not appointed to chairmanships. Right. Leadership is not seniority; it's political. It's political. It's who, who, right. who who knows you? Who likes you? And then you can be uh, chair, or you can <laughs> be uh, you know speaker of the house. Yeah. Yeah. And I found that when I went back uh, for two years uh, later, um, that it was quite different. And really, I, I feel term limits should be repealed. If not repealed, we certainly should modify it so it's longer time. To get people there a longer time. It takes time to learn the process. It takes time to develop the, the relationships. That's right. That help you drive the process in the direction you think is best for your constituents. Sure. And then of course we have to work for agreement and compromise, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But that's what. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little about your book, uh, uh, the, the memoir uh, of, of, of well, your legacy. <laughs> well, I wrote the book because I wanted to help people understand what legislators are, uh -huh. what they do, and what the power they can have uh, and in terms of influence and really having a sense of the priorities for their constituents as well as the state of Michigan. Uh, I think that uh, it's important because now people don't really respect or honor uh, elected officials. Sure. Not the same way. And uh, they don't have an appreciation. So I felt that my book would help them understand, you know, who they are, what right. they do. And my example would help them know that they have to be involved in part of the process as well. Right. And I think that what we've lost is the will, the will to make a difference yeah. in terms of the community. And I'm reminding them that we can and should, especially with Detroit being in transition now under a new mayor, they're talking about community stabilization. And in order for us to make sure the priorities and concerns are heard, right. we have to organize and make sure not only to complain, 
but to have an agenda ourselves. To be able to counter to, with something, and absolutely. To work, and to work toward that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when, when you were in the legislature, Detroit had a lot more influence and representation oh, yes. uh, than it does now. Uh, what would you say to, to current Detroit legislators who are not just in the minority because they're Detroiters, but also because there are so few Democrats uh, left in the legislature? Is there any way that, that they can actually be effective? Well, I think that they do still have the Legislative Black Caucus. Yeah. And I think that that group can be uh, the voice, but they have to understand, they have to connect and develop partnerships within their own communities to the extent people trust them, believe in them, and are there to render the support yeah. as needed. Uh, we have had very outstanding leaders like Senator uh, Dave Holmes. Sure. And his whole <laughs> focus was getting the people together, making sure we had the votes right. and that we didn't vote against each other. <laughs> right. You know, that right. was the primary purpose of organizing the caucus. So yeah. now we've moved into other uh, measurable things, but we don't seem to have the clout that we had at yeah. that time. And that's because we don't have people there that's trying to drive the process. So I think that that is what I'm trying to remind them of. It is possible, even even though when you're in minority. Even when you're in the minority, you, you can, can have still be a voice a and, and be heard. And I want to say, if people want to purchase my book, which I hope they will, uh -huh. they can call the uh, Black Caucus Foundation of Michigan. Uh -huh. That number is area code 313-285-9234. And they will be able to make sure that you get you an get opportunity to get a copy of the yeah. book. All right. And so I'm hopeful <laughs> that people who did get a copy will read it. We had a very outstanding book signing last Saturday. <clears throat> Uh, attorney Reginald Turner, uh -huh. who is uh, a, a fine example of giving back to the sure. community. Yeah. He's a strong professional attorney, but at the same time, he's providing really active a lot of, with lots of other lots things. of yeah. organizations. Yeah. So he was trying to challenge us to understand our role and responsibilities. And so I think that when they read the book, they'll understand what I'm saying. It's right. an important message. Yeah. Be involved, communicate organize and make sure that you are being heard when we have these important meetings. Yeah, okay. Well, that's a great place to, to, to leave it off and hopefully people will go pick up the book. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely.